This is the brand new Lafitte P1. We've been testing this in the ocean, diving and snorkeling in the pool for the last few weeks. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my full thoughts on how this one performs, how it stacks up against its competitors and the predecessor, the S1 Pro. I'm Torben from Dive In, and this is a Lafitte review. Let's dive in. This is so modular that you can pack it up, taking up, up almost no space when you're traveling. And yes, this one is flight compatible. So the battery right here, you can bring that on the plane. In most cases, you can bring two batteries. So you can bring two of these. And they actually also connect so you can have two of them. So you get double speed, double power. This modular system as we know from the Lafitte just even better now because now you can take the battery apart take from the main unit you can take the handles off the handles off the rails as well as you can see here i packed down two units into a packing cube uh, 14 by 10 inches or if you have one unit you take them apart and you can you know place them anywhere in the back they don't take up any space at all now the unit is ready and we can fire it up here boom Nice playing sound. You can see the Lafitte logo here running. And let's see, we got connection, we got full power, we got settings in second gear. Quick on how it runs out here. You hold this one down to turn it on, this one down. You also do a one click, two click to change the speed. So you can see it goes from one to two to three. You pull the index finger here. And now you're running the engine. As simple as that. You have a rail where you can attach a GoPro mount or a mount for anything. Easy click in, click out. And this is what we got. That's the main unit. This new unit from Lafitte. Lafitte had plenty of experience building these small modular underwater scooters. And this one in particular is the beauty of a craft. Two Lafitte units take up less space than two standard underwater scooters like the Waders or this scuba jet underwater scooters. So this really packs down so light so well. Similar in power to the scuba jet and the Waders. So a powerful small unit that will throw you away in the water really fast. If you want to be packing in more power, you do the double units, then you are preceding all of the other ones. It's packing in a lot of power, more than the precess of the S1 Pro. Should you consider changing if you have the S1 Pro already? No, I don't think so. The S1 Pro is still powerful enough for most things, but if you are looking for a new one, then this, this is a really good thing to go for. So ride time is one of the most important things about any underwater scooter. It depends on how much time you get to have fun with this one. The standard unit has up to 60 minute ride time and the extended battery, the XR version has up to 90 minutes of ride time. I have had loads of fun with it, didn't have any issues with the battery or the battery in the handle, didn't charge that for a full three weeks of use. As for ride time while diving, I brought it out for a 45 minute dive, using it on and off, came back with two thirds of the battery left. Of course, that's not running it throughout the dive, but running it on and off as you normally would. I've even been uh, chasing sharks with this one or chased by sharks, you can be the judge of that. So what do we like about it? Modular system, that's one. Power, that's two. This one is packing a lot of power compared to the size. The usability of it, you change speed settings with a push of a button and you click to go and then you're off. Then we have a nice GoPro mount up here. You can see this rail. You stick this one in here, click it in and boom, good to go. Take a look at that. Easy mount, easy to remove. And then there's a funny thing that I don't think people really notice, but I love this handle itself. It's rounded at the edges, but here at the sides it's flat, which means you get a fantastic grip on this one. Why do you need a fantastic grip? Well, if you have to equalize, you don't I didn't, at least, have to let go of the handle. I could actually hold on full speed on it. I could remove my left hand from this one and I could hold without any issues, full pull length, back and forth, holding a selfie stick with a camera filming myself, no issues, or taking it off to left hand off to equalize, not a problem at all. 
So what I don't like about the P1, while I've been testing this one, there's a lot of things I like, and, and just one thing that I, I don't like about it, it has a low on power setting that pulls it down to gear one once you hit one bar of battery. And while I like the idea of this one, I think the speed setting here is too low compared to if you're far out in the ocean and have to go back. This one doesn't give enough power to hold up its own weight and pull you back in. So you have to do most of the swimming by yourself. This one is massive fun on a dive. It's massive fun free diving with it. I've had loads of fun with this one in the pool with my kids. My son was flying away. It was crazy to see that little boy and the massive speed that he was getting in this unit. Build quality of this one, it is a really nice crafted underwater scooter. You have this big screw here, you put the battery on, you have the rails up here uh, for attachment. It feels sturdy, it feels well built don't have the sense of this being just another piece of plastic toy as a lot of underwater scooters we tested. You get the sense that this is quality all the way through. So this was the first thoughts on it, uh, the first few weeks of testing this one. Link below in the description where you follow into divein.com where I will update with more as we find more of the cool things about this one and as we test more with the Lafay P1. If you have any questions about this one or any of the uh, related products from the feed or other underwater scooters, drop a question down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe if you like this review. I'm Torben from Dive In and this is the Lefeed P1.